In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the minimum and the maximum number in an array using a for loop and then using recursion. I know you might be saying it's very easy to tell what the minimum and the maximum numbers are in this array, but imagine you have a very, very long list of numbers, then you need a predefined algorithm to find this number. I'm going to show you how to find the minimum number. So the first thing I'm going to do is take number four and put it here. We're going to pretend that 4 is the minimum number. Now we start at a second element of the array and is 3 smaller than 4? Yes, it is. So we replace this number 4 with number 3. And then we move on to this number, number 5. Now is number 5 smaller than number 3? No, it is not. So we move on to the next number. Is number 1 smaller than 3? Yes, it is. So we replace this 3 with number 1. And then finally, we move to the last number. Is number 2 smaller than number 1? No, it is not. And since we are at the end of the array, we now know that the minimum number is number 1. How about finding the maximum number? Well, the algorithm is very similar. We take number 4 and we pretend this is the maximum number. And then we start at the second element of the array. Is number 3 bigger than number 4? No, it is not. So we move on to the next one. Is number 5 larger than number 4? Yes, it is. So we replace this 4 with number 5. And then we move to the next number. Is number 1 bigger than number 5? No, it is not. So we move on to the next number. And is number 2 bigger than number 5? No, it is not. And we see that we're at the end of the array, and now we know what the maximum number is, which is 5. Let's go over the code for finding the minimum and the maximum. We're going to define the function to find the minimum, which takes in a list or an array. If this list is empty, then all we have to do is return null, like because there's no reason to search for the minimum if the list itself is empty. Otherwise, we pretend that the first element inside the list is the minimum number, so min is equal to the list at the beginning. Then we're going to traverse through the list starting at the second element, so for i in range, starting from 1 to the end of the list. If there is an element inside the list that is smaller than the min, then we update that min. So if inside the list we find that there is an element that is less than the min, then basically that will be our new min. At the end of this for loop, then we will have our minimum. So all we have to do is return the min. Let's go ahead and test it. So we want to find the minimum inside this list and it should be the number 1. And as you can see, it produces the correct output. The code for finding the maximum is actually very similar. So here, we assume that the first element is the maximum. And as we traverse through the array, if we find that an element inside the array is larger than the maximum, then it will be our new max. And the only difference between the max and the min is this sign, which is reversed. Let's test it. So we want to find the maximum inside this array, and it should be the number 5. And as you can see, it produces the correct output. Let's talk about the recursive way to find the minimum and the maximum. The first thing I'm going to do is that this function calls a different function, find min number two. It's going to take in the same list. And the only difference is that it's going to have a second parameter. And we take number four and pretend that this is the minimum number. And then this calls on itself again. We move on to the second element of the array. So now we have 3, 5, 1, 2. Now, how do we determine the second parameter? Well, we look at number 3. Is 3 smaller than 4? Yes, it is. So we replace the 4 with the 3. And then this function calls on itself again. We move to the next number. And how do we determine the second number here? Well, we look at number 5. Is 5 smaller than 3? No, it is not. So we keep the number 3 here. And then this calls on itself again. Is 1 smaller than 3? Yes, so we replace it with 1. Is number 2 smaller than 1? No, it is not. So we keep the number 1 here. And finally, we see that this list is now empty, and all we have to do is return this number 1. So this entire function returns 1 here, 
it's going to go up the recursion tree and it's going to return the number one all the way to the very top. How about finding the maximum recursively? Well, similarly, it is going to call find max2. It is going to pass in the same list. And we're going to assume that 4 is the maximum number. We move on to the next number. So now we have 3, 5, 1, and 2. And is 3 larger than 4? No, it is not. So we keep the number 4 here. Is number 5 larger than 4? Yes, it is. So we replace it with number 5. Is number 1 greater than 5? No, it is not. So we keep the number 5 here. Is 2 larger than 5? No, so we keep the number 5 here. So we see that this list is now empty, and all we have to do is return the number 5. So this here returns the number 5, and it's going to go all the way to the very top. Let's go over the recursive code for the min and the max. So we define the find min recursive, which takes in a list or an array. If the list that we're given is empty, then we have to return null. Else, this list is not empty, so we have to call define min recursive to. So return find min recursive to, which takes in a list, and we assume that the first element is the minimum. Then we define the second find min recursive, and it takes in a list and the minimum as the second parameter. Now, if you look at the recursion tree, what happens when the list is empty? Well, if the list is empty, this time we return the minimum. So in the recursion, if we find that the first element inside this list is smaller than the minimum, then we must update it. So if l at 0 is less than the minimum, then we update the minimum. Finally, we recurse again. So return find min recursive 2. We move on to the next element, so l1 and then colon. And then we have our min in here. Let's test it. So we want to find a minimum inside this array using recursion, and the result should be the number 1. And as you can see, the program produces the correct output. The recursion for the maximum is actually very similar. So here is the code, and the only difference is that you reverse the sign. So let's go ahead and test it. The maximum in this array should be the number 5. And as you can see, the program produces the correct output. In the next video, I will explain linear search using a for loop and then using recursion. So basically how this works is if you have an array and you want to find the number 5 in it, so you know that 5 is here, and 5 is at index 2. So the result will be index 2. Now, how about searching for something that, that doesn't exist? Well, if you search for number 6, we see that 6 is not inside here. So the program will return negative 1, which basically means that it doesn't exist in this array. And that is basically it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit like. And if you haven't subscribed and want to buy me coffee for free, go ahead and click that subscribe button. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.